Right guys, what is up and welcome back to a brand new video here today and some F1 2020 game news. Now, first of all, I want to mention um, Hay Fever is killing me at the minute, so hopefully I can push through. I mean, my voice sounds a bit weird, I do apologise, but either way, uh, let's jump into it. So today, there has been some breaking news regarding F1 2020 and uh, more specifically, the My Team Career Mode, which is what I'm going to focus on because of course, as you guys know, this is a Career Mode channel and this is what we're all about. Um, also, potentially, you know, League Racing as well, but we haven't had any news yet regarding online, hopefully Hopefully we will get some soon. I've, I have heard some rumours about online content looking pretty tasty this year and getting a big improvement, but those are just rumours. So uh, we'll focus on that in a later video, hopefully. But for now, we're going to focus on the My Team content. So let's jump into it. Let's delve into it. And let's go into this article, which is actually quite interesting and reveals pretty much all the features of the brand new game mode. So I'm using an article by Full Throttle Media. I'll leave a link down below, guys, in the description. Credit to those guys for this. It's a very good article because it's an interview with game director Lee Mather and there's a lot of critical information in this and um, you know they address a lot of things regarding introducing the game uh, the whole situation of how the team have you know responded with the whole situation of course with COVID-19 and everything that's been happening how they've been working from home you know trying to make things work from remote, remote locations and generally speaking it gives a bit of an insight also into the future plans regarding uh, next gen consoles for next year's game how they're going to you know move over to next gen and hopefully not have any issues unlike F1 20 15 um, the article is very good because he mentions how they struggled with you know jumping over from ps3 to ps4 and xbox 360 to xbox one five years ago and uh, lee mather said that they're not going to struggle so much this time around they've got much better plans in place and um, they prepare themselves much better this time around so uh, there's a lot of stuff in this article if you guys want to read it i'll leave a link down below in the description but we're going to focus on the my team aspect so before we jump into it, I want to clarify one thing that we mentioned in a previous video. In F1 2020, we will have career mode, the standard career mode, and my team career mode. They're two separate game modes this year. Bear that in mind. If you don't want to play my team, you can play regular career mode and vice versa. So bear that in mind, along with, of course, the online content as well, and also split screen. So you've got lots of different game modes this year. You've got the F2 content and the classics. That's all still in the game. So um, pretty much we're getting two different versions of a career mode of sorts this year which is absolutely fantastic so let's jump into it I'm going to kind of read the article word by word we're not going to skip anything out because it's a very important thing and I want to you know get through the details so run your own Formula 1 team however the real start of F1 2020 is the all new my team mode now players can develop their own Formula 1 team and make all the right or wrong decisions depending on their hindsight not only will you have full control over your racing strategies on the track, but also the growth of your team and its areas of investment. Lee Mather says it will take around two seasons to bring a team to the top, but that is heavily dependent on the choices made by the player, which is fantastic. So uh, there we go. A first insight, you know, career mode tend to be 10 seasons long. It will take two seasons to bring a team from zero to hero, which is great. So you can't do it in one season, which is really, really good. And even then, it sounds like to do it in two seasons, you have to absolutely nail everything, which is really, really good. For example, you'll get to choose sponsors, build up facilities for research and development, train a second driver and increase marketing efforts to bring in more advertising partners at better rates. That there, I've got to stop there straight away. Um, we addressed this in the previous video. I'll leave a link up here, guys, if you haven't seen it. Um, but really, really interesting. Again, kind of developing and you know reaffirming that there's lots of different sectors and lots of different parts in this year's game. Um, it's not all just about improving the car of the R&D rate. You know, sponsorships, how you brand those sponsors at racetracks. You know, via interviews, press time, and also the, the training of the second driver. That's very interesting. That one. I, I'm really keen to see how that works. And I mentioned in the previous video. It reminds me of FIFA when you train up the young players, you know, in the training system, in the training academy. So we'll see if it's something like that. But very, very interesting and a lot of information to take in just with three lines there as we continue on. But it doesn't stop there. You also have to carefully manage how the time is spent between race weekends, allow vacation time to boost team morale and effectively balance the work between all facilities in operation with a very important goal in mind. To profit and earn R&D points. So a lot to take in there. That's a new thing we haven't seen yet. So 
vacation. So it seems like, again, this is going to reaffirm um, what I mentioned in a pre in the previous video. Um, it seems like, if I had to guess, this year's crew mode is going to have a calendar system of sorts. Kind of like FIFA career mode or the brand new MotoGP 20 crew mode where you go week by week and you have to pay team salaries, um, you know, make developments, invest in certain areas, do research and, you know, work on sponsorship deals press, all that kind of stuff, you know, marketing, it's going to be a, a week by week thing. So for example, on those race weekends where there's not a race, you're still going to be doing work, whether it be training, you know, your teammate up to improve the second driver, you know, uh, sponsorship deals, any kind of activity that this career mode is going to make you do. So it sounds really, really exciting and you're going to be really, really busy every single race weekend. He also mentions team morale and that will hopefully effectively balance the work on the, all the facilities. So again, there might be some kind of like morale, uh, chemistry, synergy kind of um, bar things. So basically you'll start off at like 50% and the better you work and the more you work together, that, that synergy and kind of team chemistry will kind of increase or decrease if I had to guess, uh, which could be really, really exciting in my opinion. Money is spent on driver hires and paying your engine supplier, whilst R&D points are essential for track and are dictated by how your team performs, including your secondary drivers on track results, which is absolutely huge. So this year, finally, your teammate has a role to play. You need your teammate to do well. If your teammate does well, you're going to get more R&D points, which is fantastic. So finally... Um, you're going to have that feeling after so many F1 games, we're going to have that feeling of the teammate is contributing to the development of the car and the team. So hopefully uh, we can do well and that's going to be really, really, really interesting in my opinion. Also worth noting, paying for engine suppliers. So that could be very, very interesting. Whether you purchase a Honda, Renault, Ferrari, or Mercedes power unit, I'm guessing, of course, um, Renault and Honda would be cheaper because they're not as strong as Ferrari or Mercedes. So again, it's all about where you decide to spend your funds, whether it be aerodynamics, engine, sponsorship, marketing, drivers, you know, lots of different options. And you're going to have to try and be smart about where you place your money. My team also uses the F1 regulation car built by Co-Masters to official F1 spec in assistance with F1 engineers and introduced in last year's title, which can be customized with a range of skins. The vehicle comes equipped with five to six sponsor slots that occupy various wings and plates. Those edging on the more creative side of the spectrum can even use two layers to create a badge, set outfit colors, customize team branding, and even choose the color scheme used in facilities. When starting out, your facility will be fitted with a modest wind tunnel setup for COD development before later flourishing. So again, very interesting information there. I'm saying that you can pretty much do a pretty basic job you know, of customizing your car, and it will look cool, it will look unique, or you can go really in depth and make it look really, really cool. Um, based off of this, it does kind of indicate that maybe customizing your own team badge, possibly, you know, when it mentions um, those edging on the, on the more creative side of the spectrum can even use two layers to create a badge, set outfit colors, customize team branding, and even use the color scheme used in the facilities. That to me indicates maybe we could make our own badges. Hopefully they're not just custom, like pre-made ones. It does sound like the livery though, like F1 2019, we're just going to have a selection of liveries to choose from. And all you can do is really change the colors. But again, hopefully there's a bit of fun to play with with the sponsors as well. That's going to play a key part in terms of making your car look unique and how you do your sponsors on the car. So uh, I love that. And the last bit as well, when starting out, your facility will be fitted with a modest wind tunnel. So again, you know, you're a new team. You don't have much money. Um, to be fair, most teams that are new don't really have wind tunnels or they use other teams in wind tunnels or other manufacturers. Um, but you'll have a very basic one and you can develop that. So that's going to be quite interesting to see how that actually happens and uh, seeing how the, maybe the, the HQ, the headquarters in a way, kind of develops as you spend more money on the team. Lee Mather believes my team disrupts many elements in the game as a driver hire results in a purge that must be filled, which could see competitors in F2 being roped in to occupy the void. As we addressed in the last video, saying that in this year's game, you could choose from all the current F1 drivers on the grid and also the F2 drivers. So you're going to have a selection of about 40 drivers to choose from in terms of who you sign as your teammate. Of course, there still exists much criteria for which teams any driver can or cannot go to. Let's say you refuse to invest your money into the necessary research and upgrades to improve your car and instead focused on saving it all up to buy out Lewis Hamilton from Mercedes. Well, he'd simply turn it down because you've got a level one engine and facilities. If he joined, he'd be losing every race and he wouldn't have a, a, a suitable car. Upgrades are crucial for your success, not just the cash you have on standby. 
Again, reaffirming that you can't just go straight to the best drivers and buy them up. Interesting, you mentioned level one engine and facilities. So I'm guessing, obviously, there's multiple levels to this. Um, it seems to be a level system rather than a percentage system. So level one, level two, level three, who knows how many levels there could be. So um, that seems to be the way it works. Engine and facilities, so different departments. And I love that personally, that you can't just you know buy the best drivers. You're gonna have to be smart. And again, maybe maybe you buy an F2 driver and you train them up. So someone with potential or someone that looks pretty exciting. So for example, let's say uh, Robert Schwartzman in the Prima car for, F for F2 2020 um, seems like a really good driver, you know, tip for great things. Maybe you, it would be worth signing him on a low budget and trying to train him up to be a really good driver and he would be a really good long-term future option for you. Treat my team like a blank canvas, Lee Mather says. You'll speak to Will Buxton in your first interview and whatever answer you give to him could impact the, the department it represents. Love that. Absolutely love that. We've been asking for years to have Will Buxton in the game. Um, you know, We've also asked for possibly Martin Brundle on commentary rather than Anthony Davidson. But for now, I'm taking that. Will Buxton, that is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully, he's in the game a lot more than just this first interview. And he's in you know, the entirety of the career mode. Um, whenever you have interviews, it's always Will Buxton. That's going to feel a lot more exciting and a lot more like the real thing, which I absolutely love. And I'm really, really gassed about that. You know, bringing those real life characters into the career mode makes you feel a lot more real and a lot more you know, realistic in that sense. It continues to say... If you say the car is going to be stable around turns, the chassis department will take note of that and it will boost their morale. Of course, we had that in last year's game anyway, so nothing new there. In addition to managing your own team, you'll still be out on the racetrack alongside your secondary driver to compete for points. Remember, F1 2020 is still a racing game first and foremost, but now it comes complete with management aspects. Very, very exciting. I can't wait. It sounds fantastic and I really, really... I'm looking forward to it. I have heard a rumor that uh, with my team, you at, at first, when you first start the team, you can't sign an F1 driver because, of course, you don't have the budget for it. So um, at first, when you first build the team, I think you have to pick only from F2 drivers. Don't quote me on that. Those are rumors that I've seen. Same way at the start of the video I mentioned about the online content, you know, uh, league racing, uh, multiplayer rumors. Um, Take them with a pinch of salt, but uh, we're going to go on to the last part, the last paragraph, which is actually quite interesting as well, and brings up some important information regarding career mode. With the introduction of my team to the F1 franchise, the story elements and rivalries of F1 2019's career mode, this is referring to Devon Butler and Lucas Weber, have now been retired in this year's entry. This is due to the shared focus between development teams, which sees F1 titles created simultaneously. Co-Masters has retained the three-race Formula 2 taster before joining the main F1 season, which now offers options for shorter seasons of 10, 16, or the full 22 races, and the ability to change the order of the tracks. You can also expect driver moves to occur at least once per season, perhaps twice if it's a longer one. So... There you go. There is some information regarding the normal career mode, game mode, um, not my team. So uh, Weber and uh, Devon Butler are not going to return. So RIP those guys and uh, you'll be forever missed in terms of the career mode aspect. You're still going to have the F2 stuff and you can still do the preview uh, when you do the feeder series and you're going to have that at the start of the game. So um, that's good for career mode fans, obviously. If I do career mode, that's interesting for me to know. And uh, worth noting as well, again, just to, to reaffirm, that you can do 10, 16, or 22 races and change the order of those. So you can do whatever tracks you want, which is really, really exciting. And uh, I cannot wait. So uh, yeah, guys, I think that's going to be it all for this video. There is a lot more information in this article talking about the new tracks, you know, Vietnam, and Zanvo, and you know, talking about all the small details here and there, even mentions the VR as well, and uh, you know, loads of little things. So I do recommend you guys uh, check out the article because um, there's a lot of information there, and it goes really in depth. And it's a direct interview with Lee Mather, so there's always going to be you know little bits of information here, little tidbits that you guys can pick up. But guys, that's going to be it from me here today. If you guys enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe if you are new for all the latest breaking F1 2020 game news, and also click the bell icon, guys, to be notified when that news goes live. And also finally check out the two videos on screen. And if you made it in the video, let me know what you think of my glasses. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. But until then, take care and goodbye.